about a year ago, I had a question, can a guy like me, 50 plus, create a YouTube channel, especially a travel YouTube channel, and be successful? Well, it's been a year, and for those that have subscribed, I really appreciate it. And this video, I'm gonna tell you the journey so far, how we're doing. I'm gonna go over some analytics, show you how many subscribers we have, kind of talk to you why we started this YouTube channel, and a lot of information that you just might find interesting and perhaps helpful if you're thinking of doing a YouTube channel yourself. So why did we start a YouTube channel? Well, number one, we love Rome. I lived there when I was younger for a period of time. We've been back several times since then. Currently, we're in Rome about half the year and we just love it and I love sharing Rome with you. My real profession, I'm a realtor, you know, to be honest, being a realtor, I didn't have a company 401k and some of those things, and maybe I didn't make the best investments. So I'm investing my time now to try to create a uh, revenue stream that can kind of help us as we, uh, you know, get older. So kind of do what you love, I guess. That's what it comes down to. Finally get a chance to do what I love. So let me tell you a little bit about the beginning. When we first started the channel, it started in the May of 2023. That's when we first went and started doing videos in Rome. And the first videos, you know, I had to learn how to edit. I hadn't really learned how to edit. And it took me a while to kind of learn the ropes on that. Um, some of the first videos, you know, weren't that great. And they're still not great, but they're getting a lot better than when I started a year ago. Originally, we were just kind of making videos about maybe what we're doing in Rome, kind of trying to be silly, kind of, you know, doing things. But not really getting a lot of response. I mean, we were getting maybe from every 300 views, we'd get somebody to subscribe, right? One in 300. And I realized that, you know, I'm not great at communication. I'm not great at entertaining. And I'm not really a comedian. So to entertain was probably not my strength. But my love for Rome is there. And I thought, well, I can kind of create this channel to help others that want to go to Rome and kind of show them the ropes more about how to how to get around Rome, how to get on the buses and the tickets and you know what to see, you know, the pitfalls and just a lot of information, where to stay, what to eat, just a lot of things I felt I could bring to the table to help people. As I started making videos more about how to, my subscribers jumped from instead of one in 300, I was getting better than one in 100. Some of my videos are almost two per 100. So it kind of reaffirmed what I what I thought. You know, I needed to bring more value, and that's really the direction this channel's changing. It's trying to bring value in every video. Let's talk a little bit about my analytics, okay? On the channel, kind of, you probably are wondering, well, how big has the channel gotten in one year? Is the channel monetized? And if you don't know, monetization with YouTube, you have to have a thousand subscribers, and there's some other criteria, but basically you need a thousand subscribers before you can apply for monetization. Monetization means at that point, they're gonna pay you something every time somebody watches one of your videos. Not a lot, but something, and I'll show you how much. So let me go here to my analytics. How many subscribers? I started with zero, and by May, because I had some family and friends, I had like 20 people sign up before we went to Italy. But once we got to Rome, we started putting videos once or twice a week. And I remember doing a video where I said, I've got 30, I think it was 32 subscribers. And today we have, a year later, a year and one week later, we have 5,803 subscribers. Thank you, for those that subscribe. So that's where we're at right now. Now you're probably wondering, how much money do you make? Okay, let's look at this. I don't use these uh, analytics that much, so I don't, I'm not like trying to teach you how to use analytics. I'm just trying to stumble my, my way through so I can kind of show you. But let's go to money. So, so far this month, I've made 577. Let's go for lifetime here. Okay, so to date, I started, I got monetized on the 28th of September. That was the first day I started getting paid for the views. So the first, you know, five months or so, I was making anywhere, you know, just bouncing around. You can see here from one to four dollars per day on people watching the videos, and it's gone up. You know, some days, I, my biggest day ever, I think, is right here. Let's see, it's right up forty-four thirty-two. That's the most I made in one day. But to date, for three hundred sixty-five days, although I wasn't getting paid in the first part, I have now made three thousand. 
$63.36. You know, that's pretty good. But when you consider I have made about 100 videos, some of these are, are shorts, but most of them are regular videos, and each video I spend anywhere from 10 to 20 hours to edit, I'm making a whopping, I don't know, I didn't do the math, but probably 25 to 50 cents an hour. I'm making all kinds of money. Now, how much do I make per subscriber? Let's see, I, can, I looked at this earlier. Let's see if I can find it. Over the life of the channel, I made, and it's gone up since then because my videos are better and they're longer and they're retaining more people. But because of my first videos, I wasn't getting paid. I'm making $6.28 per thousand people that watch the video. So I'm making almost a half a penny from you watching this video. But let's reduce that to just the last, you know, 28 days. Okay, see what this comes out to. So I went from six, now I'm up, up to on average in the last month, $8.30, almost a penny. I'm gonna get rich if you keep watching my video, maybe a million times. Every time you watch a video of mine, I get paid almost one penny. So it adds up though, one by one by one, right? Now I wanna tell you a little bit about the future of the channel and probably one of the most things I'm proud about is we are getting ready to launch a guidebook. It's called Rome Travel Guida. And let me show you, I think it's a game changer. I think I put so much time into this thing, hundreds of hours, so far well over 100 hours, and by the time I finish, it'll be another couple hundred hours. But what it is, it's a guidebook, it's a virtual guidebook that I think will really help those that are traveling to Rome, whether it's the first time or the 10th time. There's certain things that we can certainly share with you that will be very valuable. And let me kind of show you some of the features on the on the on the site. It, it, it is up and going right now. Here it is right here on the thing. I we just I just launched the site actually this morning. And um, the guidebook's not completed, but basically it's about the guidebook and it comes through and it and it starts out with let's plan. And then if you look on the, the lessons or chapters of the book, I think there's the let's plan is a chapter. There's like lessons, let's call them lessons. So you got this, uh, let's get oriented. It's an orientation of Rome. Then when to book your hotel or Airbnb, a packing guide, um, picking the right location, best time to visit, how many days in Rome, getting your high speed rail tickets, things like that in advance. And then if you come down here, it comes down to let's go. These are more like when you're actually in Rome. And there's several things to do. It's, we're gonna have a chapter about the Vatican, the tickets and all of the different options there for, for guided tours and whatnot. Same with the Colosseum and Roman Forum, about how to rent those scooters or bikes or the car shares, how to get a regular car rental, avoiding pickpockets, grocery store shopping, getting a taxi. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Getting Metro and bus tickets, getting from your hotel, from the airport to your hotel. Uh, Oh, here's one that's kind of interesting, 2025, Rome's Year of the Jubilee. Now, if you don't know what that is, this takes place in Rome every 25 years, and that means it's happening again in 2025. The last one was in 2000. The tradition started back in 1300. Now, there are four papal churches in Rome. There are four papal churches in the Catholic Church, and they all are in Rome. And each one of those, they have a holy door, and those holy doors are actually sealed. They're not just shut. They're sealed with cement and mortar. They're sealed for 25 years. And then every 25 years, the Pope opens the doors and you can walk through those doors. And people from all over the world will be traveling to Rome next year in 2025 to tour the four Popple Basilicas. I'm doing a video about it now, but they'll tour the four Popple Basilicas and they'll be able to walk through those doors. And I'm not Catholic, but I believe that if you walk through those doors, you get a remission of your sins. And I could be wrong, so put that in the comments if I am but I believe that's the purpose of that. But it also gives them the opportunity to go visit these four papal churches. One of them is St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican, and there's Santa Maria Maggiore. Uh, there's St. John, anyway, there, there's two others, I can't remember the names of them right now, but there are four of them, I'm making a video about it. But it's really kind of interesting, and in 2025, it's gonna be a big ordeal. It really will be uh, for those coming to Rome. Um, and then we got day itineraries. I got lots of great GPS guided day itineraries, more than like probably close to 10 different itineraries, maybe more than that. Day trips from Rome, the Rome's top 50 sites, all GPS guided with a map. Um, how to get to the sites using the Metro, the best apps, just lots of different things. 
Then we come down to one of my favorite sections. This is Let's Eat. I love eating in Rome. I think most people do. Italian food is great. And in here, we get to share some of our favorite restaurants, pizzerias, gelaterias, all those things. It's all GPS guided. I've already completed one or a couple of these sections here. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. This is for the pizza. So here's the pizza map here. And this will be on your on your you can use it on your on your uh, laptop or on your phone it's it's all you know it's it's programmed for mobile use as well in this here's pizzeria the pizzas of rome and these are all the locations that i've put up so far i think i've got like 25 26 different locations now most people don't know this but there are four types of pizza in rome not just pizza there's taglio pizza which is big pan pizza they cut it up with scissors and you buy it by the weight there's Napolitan style pizza. That's kind of what people, you know, this more stereotypical type of pizza. It's the hand tossed pizza with a thick crust around the edge. There's the pensa pizza, which is a special type of dough. It's easy to digest. Instead of being uh, rolled out or hand tossed, it's more like a stretched dough and um, has a complete different taste to it. And then there's the Roman style pizza. Now, people don't know this, but Roman style pizza is basically, it's rolled out with a rolling pin and it's basically like an 16th of an inch thick and the sauce goes all the way to the edges and then right around the edges when it's in that fired oven they turn kind of like black and crispy and kind of gives it that smoky flavor but just the very edges of the pizza um it's pretty good i prefer napolitan style but there are four styles of pizza so when you're in rome just don't think you're getting pizza as pizza and on this map I, you can actually say hey i just want to check out the taglio style pizzas and it'll give them to you or Let's say you want to just go to the Roman style pizzas. I don't have that many of them. I've been to two that, I've been to more than two, but two that were worth mentioning. I thought they were both pretty good. And then if you click on it in the thing, it'll give you uh, a picture of the place. It'll give you what I put in here, a little description or a little bit of information, maybe what to order or kind of some of my thoughts about the place. And then if you click on the address, your GPS will then guide you to that pizzeria, okay? So it's really good. I think it's going to be super helpful. And we're making maps for a lot of things. Like I said, we're making them for all of the sites in Rome. Not all of them, but like the top 50 sites in Rome. That just gives you an idea. There'll be sites in Rome. There'll be all of the like good coffee shops, um, the, the, the street food. Uh, we have, I've already, I'm already working on that one right now. It's all the street food in Rome, the street food that we've tried and, and that we uh, make, make sure that we you know have gone there. We kind of know what we're talking about, opposed to just looking up things online. And then we've got the pastry shops and so many other things planned. So these maps, I think, can come in really helpful to you when you're in Rome. Now, I'm sorry this is a long plug for this thing. I'm just real excited about it. I think it's super going to be super, super helpful. Now, it is going to be a premium, and it's going to be $20 to buy the... It's, it's going to be a virtual guide. And I'm going to be putting up a uh, discount initially. It's going to be half price. What a bargain, right? It won't be completely done when I do that. Um, I hope to have it enough done by this next week that I can offer that for $10. But the nice thing is, even if you're purchasing it in advance for $10, $10 as it gets completed, you're going to get access to the entire travel guide, okay? And the nice thing is it's a one-time purchase. Any updates, you know, 2026 year, 2027, those will be included in your purchase. You'll be able to come back and check those out. Maybe even plan another trip in 2029. You'll be able to see the differences. And there'll be slight differences from year to year, obviously. But um, we're going to continue with this. And if you want to support the channel, that's probably the best way. Right now, I'm making about one penny for you watching the video. And uh, while that's great, and I do appreciate you watching the video, don't get me wrong, it's not just about the money. This is another great way to support the channel. And honestly, it's a two-way street because I'm going to give you, I think, way more in value than you're going to pay. Um, that's just the way it is. Register for the, the guide. Even if it's not completed right now, you can get on there and, and register. But I'm working on it every day. So you're going to see changes to take place almost daily where you, maybe a new chapter is added or or different things or features um, are added to this guide. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate those who subscribe. If you're watching this video just to kind of see how I'm doing with uh, YouTube and stuff, this isn't a video about how to grow your channel on YouTube. It's about Rome. So don't subscribe if you're expecting that. But if you are possibly going to be going to Rome in the near future, subscribe. I've got some great information to share with you. 
Again, thanks for watching and to the next one. A la próxima. Ciao.